In this video, I'm going to be breaking seven rules with the Panasonic EVA 1. Here's the story. In video production, there are certain rules that you're supposed to follow. However, I've found in my experience that some rules are made to be broken. For example, rule number one, the 180 degree shutter rule. If you don't know what the 180 degree shutter rule is, it's basically whatever your frame rate is. So for example, right now I'm recording in 25 frames per second. What you want your shutter speed to be is double whatever your frame rate is. So for what I'm recording right now, I want my shutter speed to be one over 50. And you might be thinking, well, why does the rule say you need to double your frame rate to get your shutter speed? Well, the reason behind that is to get pleasing and nice motion blur. And right now I'm talking to camera and now I'm waving my hands to illustrate this point. But if I had a higher shutter speed, then my hands would be a lot more crisper and there'd be less motion blur, which doesn't look really good to the audience for something like this. If you're shooting something that's high action, you might want a higher shutter speed to cut down on that motion blur. But for normal recording, you typically want that 180 degree shutter rule to be in effect so you can get pleasing motion blur. But we're actually breaking that rule right now and we're recording at a 1 over 60 shutter because of the Lumetric time clock in the background. If I was recording at a 50 shutter, then there'd be lines scrolling through the number, which is a little bit distracting and something that I don't want in my video. In fact, let me show you right now. And there you can see it. How annoying and frustrating is that? It really does take away from me talking right now to the viewer. Very distracting and something that just really shouldn't be there. So the way to fix that is to change the shutter and break the 180 degree shutter rule. And now we're back to a 60 shutter and now that distraction is gone. And now we're moving on to the next rule that we're gonna break and that is always shoot in log. So the idea of log is to get the maximum amount of dynamic range. However, sometimes when you're recording things, you don't need to have a whole bunch of dynamic range. With the Panasonic EVA 1, it can get acclaimed 14 stops of dynamic range when shooting in V-Log. However, when you're shooting in a controlled lighting scenario, much like this one, you don't necessarily really need to have 14 stops of dynamic range. When you're shooting in Log, you also need to factor in extra time for editing. So you need to be using LUTs and then you need to color grade that to get the image to look exactly how you want. And it can be a lot of extra work that isn't necessarily needed. So what I'm doing right now is recording in a different color setting. I'm not recording in log like I normally do. And I'm recording with scene file two in the Panasonic EVA 1. So I'm not recording in log, I'm shooting with scene file two. And let me know in the comments, do you see much of a difference? Do you really think that because I have a camera that shoots in log, I really should be shooting in log? Or does this look good to you? Rule number three, always shoot at your camera's native ISO. Now with the Panasonic EVA 1, there is two native ISOs. There's 800 and 2500. And right now I'm shooting on the 2500 setting. However, my ISO is actually 1600. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I find that when you're shooting at 2500 ISO on the Panasonic EVA 1, it's still a little bit noisier than what the native 800 ISO is when you're recording on the 800 ISO circuit. So one of the little tricks that I've found is to just take the ISO down a little bit and they'll clean up some of the noise that you might find when shooting at 2500 ISO. And when you go off your native ISO, I do believe that you do lose a little bit of dynamic range. However, in a situation like this, I'm not really too worried about dynamic range. So recording at a 1600 ISO just to clean up the image a little bit works for me. Rule number four, never use in-camera noise reduction always do noise reduction in post. That is one of the rules that I've seen a lot on the internet and it does make a lot of sense because if you use the noise reduction in the camera, you've bought it, that's it. There's no coming back. However, if you do noise reduction in post, then you can have a lot more control over your image and really dial in exactly what you want your image to look like. There's no buying it and then going, uh-oh, I wanna take that back. You get to choose how much noise reduction you add and how much you don't add. However, this can be really time consuming and something that a lot of creators just don't have time or patience for. So right now I've got noise reduction on in the EVA 1 and there are three settings. There's noise reduction one, two, and smooth. And you better believe we're doing smooth right now, which is the most aggressive noise reduction. And this noise reduction is actually designed for higher ISOs. And right now I'm not at a very high ISO. I'm at 1600. But when I was looking at my monitor and punching in 400%, I was looking at the different noise patterns between noise reduction one, two, and smooth. And I thought, hmm, 
Smooth looks all right. So that's what I'm using right now. Let me know, do you see any noise in this image or does it look smooth to you? And just for a point of reference, this is what the image looks like with no noise reduction on. And now we're back with the smooth noise reduction. And rule number five is you always want the sharpest image. Cameras these days are known to be very sharp and the Evil One is notorious for being a sharp camera as well. It's got a 5.7K sensor, which then downscales to 4K. And the idea behind that is to give you a nice sharp image. However, for some people, having a really sharp image isn't very flattering and isn't desired. So what I'm doing right now is I have a Tiffin Black Pro Mist Filter 1.8 strength on. And the idea behind this filter is to cut back on some of that digital sharpness that you might get out of these modern cameras. The idea is to cut down on that digital sharpness and also add a little bit of bloom to the highlights in your image. But let me know what you think. Right now I'm really just experimenting with this filter to see if I really like the look. So far I like it, but let me know in the comments, do you like the look or do you think it's not necessary? And here's what the image looks like without the filter on. Another rule is to not always shoot full open. And when I say full open, I mean opening up the aperture of your lens to the max that it will go. So right now I'm using the Sigma 18 to 35 F 1.8, but my aperture right now is set to 2.8 because I'm not opening it up all the way so I can have a bit more depth of field in my image. However, let's break that rule. And now I'm at 1.8 or it says 1.7 on the Eva. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I'm open all the way with this Sigma lens and this is what the image looks like. And if I start to go back and then maybe even go forward, you'll see that I've lost a bit of my focal depth of field. So I need to be really careful that I'm not leaning back or leaning forward too much, changing the focus of the image, meaning that I'm in focus or out of focus. It does soften the background up a little bit as well, but normally I'm happy with the 2.8. I also dropped the ISO to 1000 as well to compensate for the extra light coming in. And if I'm not recording in a studio space like this, I also do try to avoid shooting full open as well, just because of having that depth of field being so razor thin, it can be quite hard to get things in focus. For example, if you're doing product photography or videography, you might need to have a higher aperture like an F5.6 or F8, or even higher, just to get the whole item in focus. Yes, having a really shallow depth of field can be good and look very cinematic and cool, but what also is cool is having things actually in focus as well. So that's a rule that I typically try to follow, but also am aware of and know when to break. And finally, always shoot in 4K or shoot in the highest resolution that your camera has. So the Evil One has a 5.7K sensor, but only records 4K internally. And right now I don't have an external monitor to record to, so I'm stuck with the maximum resolution of 4K. However, I'm breaking that rule right now and recording full HD 25P. And what I've done is I've edited this whole video in 1080 HD, and then I've exported it as a 4K YouTube file. Let me know in the comments, could you tell that this video was recorded at 1080 HD and not 4K? And the reason that you might not want to record in 4K is because of file sizes or even just the post workflow. For example, you might be editing on a laptop that doesn't really like editing 4K footage. However, it doesn't have much of a problem with editing full HD video. So that might be a reason why you wouldn't record in 4K or the highest resolution that your camera can record in. And that will do it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on video creation in the future.